Woven tops are great for summer, especially if they have little details on the neckline, those are the best. What you see today is a style that has the cutest pleated neckline with a little keyhole there as an option. Just the cutest neckline. I've made three and here's a peak of one. Super cute. Stay with me. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and in this case, woven sewing. I love myself a woven top, of course. I'm sure we have lovely woven fabrics in our collection and this is a great pattern for them. Great for summer. It's a really cute style and it's a new pattern from Itch to Stitch called Nittany Top with a double T. So, so cute. At the start of the video, I said that it had details on the neckline and I absolutely love styles like that. When some simple styles don't have details on the neckline, sometimes I add them because they're just a lot of fun. And in this case, when you look at the pictures here, you will see pleats on the neckline, but the pleats aren't straightforward. The ones in the center sort of are overlapping each other. And if you want to, there's the option of adding the cutest little keyhole behind those pleats. So it's a little bit of skin showing there with the pleats covering it partially. I think it's so, so cute. You know, it's not low. You're not going to be showing cleavage, but it's just enough to be a different neckline and a very beautiful one at that. If the keyhole detail is not for you, no drama because it's just an option. You can sew the neckline normal just with the pleats on the front. This front piece is partially lined and that is the way that the neckline is finished. The back piece is cut on the fold. Well, so is the front. And on the back, this neckline is finished with a little bias binding. Basically, once you've done your neckline, the lining piece that goes inside will be sewn onto the side seam and the armhole and it will become sort of one piece. And then you sew it onto the back. That bust volume has been taken up to the neckline. So the space for your bust comes from above the bust. You don't have a side bust that. But because the lining piece doesn't have those pleats, you will have a bust that inside on that lining piece only. And the size of that dart, of course, will differ according to the cup size that you're sewing. It's meant to hit the full hip. The hem is curved. There is a sash piece that you can cut out. It's in the pattern if you want to tie that around your waist for some definition. It is optional. You have a short sleeve. The shoulder seam is meant to fit the shoulder. It's just a really well-fitting, cute top with lovely details that is not tight at all. Not tight, not boxy. You know, it's to stitch. Anything you make with these patterns, you're just going to look great. Everyone will. The best types of fabrics for this design need to be lightweight wovens that drape. It is basically because you have pleats coming from above the bust. They need to drape over the bust and down your, your center. If you choose even a lightweight fabric that is structured, the pleats are just going to stand out. And I personally don't like that look. So I would stay away from gauze or cotton lawn, things like that. And just stay with maybe rayon linen blend, rayon, georgette, crepe, silk. The fabric does really need to drape for these pleats to look good on you over the bust like that and not create excess volume at the waist in the center of your body. I've made three and they're all in different fabrics. My tester version I made in a solid color and it's a rayon linen blend. Rayon 86% linen 14% is the composition and then the other one I made in a rayon twill it is 100% rayon although I wouldn't say it's light lightweight I'd say it's light to medium weight and I would say it's my winter version <laughs> and the third one I made is in a lightweight chiffon totally totally transparent very very light and I did make modifications to the chiffon one in the construction because yeah you'll see it when I show you <laughs> Because the Knitted Knit Top is a brand new pattern, it is 20% off for the first week. So I will leave all the links below in the description box with the dates and the information and of course my affiliate link. If you want to get this pattern through my affiliate link, I make a small commission from there. This is one of the ways I make an income by just creating all this free content on YouTube. So if you like my work, if it helps you with your sewing, I'd be super happy if you used my affiliate link if you were planning to purchase the pattern and it won't cost you any extra. So thank you so much. The sizing is amazing from double zero to 40 US and because it's a woven pattern you have cups A through double D and from sizes 22 onwards you have B to double D. It's so so helpful to have those individual cup sizes and the C cup size works perfect for me. For my versions I chose a size 14 with a C cup and from the waist to the hips I blended out to a size 16. The fit is relaxed you have about six inches of ease around the bust lots of ease at the waist and around the hips about four to five inches of ease 
you know, these types of ease are perfect for flowy fabrics like this. I think it's perfect. I wouldn't want it tighter. I wouldn't want it looser. It's just right. <laughs> because this finished garment measurement is so detailed, you know, you have detailed measurements like the length. And knowing the length that I like and looking at what the pattern had for my size, I decided to make my top an inch shorter. Just for personal preference, not for feet actually. And I did use the shorten and lengthen lines to just overlap there and make my top one inch shorter. I didn't plan to wear it with a sash. I just wanted to wear my tops no more, just flowing over a skirt or pants. And that was the length that I wanted. And I'm glad I made that choice because I like the length that these tops have when it's shorter than the original. Uh, and consider that I'm taller than the drafted height, but then again, the length that you like your tops is so personal. It is personal preference. Some people like them longer, some people like them shorter. I like them between the mid and the full hip. Of course, I filmed the sewing for you. You might be wondering how does this all come together and you will see it next in Up Close and Sew Personal, specifically focusing on the neckline with the pleats and the keyhole. If you're not sewing the keyhole, then it'll be so much easier, but you will still see how to put all these pleats together and how to make the knit and knee top come true for you if it's a style that you like and you want to make one for yourself. So let's see. There are many pattern pieces in the knit and knit top so you're not going to spend that much time cutting out. You do need some accuracy though <laughs> and both the back piece and the front piece are cut on the fold. On the neckline of the front you can see it's quite flat and extended and that's because you have several pleats that are going to be there and you can see the lines I've marked with my tracing paper and there there's an optional keyhole that I am actually going to do because I think it's cute but if you're not doing it you don't need to mark that little thing there I'll show you that up closer in a sec there's a tiny piece of binding that's cut on the bias that is going to finish the neckline only on the back because the front will be partially lined so here is my lining piece for my front, it's not going to extend the full length, you can see it's shorter there, so it'll reach around there. There is a side bust start there according to your cup size. There's no dart on the main blouse because the volume and the space for the bust comes at the neckline from above your bust. And here is a simple short sleeve. So that is all and I'll just show you what that looks like up close. Here you can see the keyhole mark right there. So it will touch one of these lines here. If you start looking from the outer edge towards the armhole, you're going to see several letters here. I'm going to put them on the screen. You're going to see E, G, J, M, and P. And those are just references for the instructions on the way that these pleats are going to be folded. These lines, some of them will be folded with the fabric right sides together and others with the wrong sides together. And of course you have the same thing on the other side because it's on the fold. So you have to do the same thing on both sides. My marks are all on the wrong side of the fabric, but there are some marks that I need to have on the right side of the fabric. I'm going to do an extra step which will help me in the end because some of these lines need to be folded with the wrong sides of the fabric together. That means that I need to have a mark here on the right side somehow to know what I'm pressing when I'm folding. So the ones that need to be folded with the fabric wrong sides together, I'm going to be doing some hand basting. Just hand basting to mark the line, just a few stitches so that I know. And that's going to help me not get confused at all. So I'll do that all in the preparation phase. See, I've got my front again so you can see it. I've got it sideways this time and I'll put the letters on the screen that you'll see on the pattern. So you can see that on line M right there. I've done a hand baste, so it's just with a light color thread so I can see it and the very end I've got the last line that is line E also with a hand baste and those are the ones that you're going to need to fold wrong sides together so I will see them now because I have that hand basting and I've done it for both you can see there both sides in the instructions you have two options and it is in the preparation of these pleats although you're not going to be forming the pleats yet you will be folding on the lines like that and it says either press or baste. Now the basting option is mentioned there if your fabric doesn't take a press really well, it doesn't form a good memory crease. In this case, this fabric actually does press really well, but I'm going to be basting these folds because my marking system with this tracing paper is going to disappear as long as any heat comes near it. 
So if I go ahead and press one of these lines, everything's going to disappear. So I really don't want it to disappear. For example, this line, line G, this one needs to be pressed right sides together, which means I would just take this line like this, take it to the iron and just press this crease like that. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be basting it down just right on the edge and having everything basted. When it's time to actually form the pleats, I will have my lines basted in the correct way they should. Some of them from the wrong side, some of them from the right side. And once I assemble all these pleats, then I'm going to give it a press. <laughs> That's how I'm going to do it, just because of the way I'm marking my fabric. This is my front lining piece. You can see the little keyhole mark there. I have already stay stitched the neckline from the shoulders to the center on one side and from the shoulder to the center right there. I have also sewn my bust studs. These are all sewn. So after getting all this ready, put it aside and we can start preparing the pleats. This is my front neckline and I've got it extended wrong sides up. You can see all my marks here are close. I have stay stitched the neckline. It is quite extended and it does have the risk of stretching out and we're going to be doing a lot of things here, manipulation. So I've sewn from the shoulder up to the center and then from the other shoulder up to the center. You can see the white basting stitches that I did to mark these pleats specifically because I won't be able to see the marks on this side of the fabric. I'll start by folding these two outer lines marked as E and for these you need to put the fabric wrong sides together so this way. That's why if I didn't have this stitch here I wouldn't be able to see it so instead of going to the iron and doing that I'm just going to base this because I don't want to lose my marks anywhere. that's that one and the same one on this other side the first line fabric wrong sides together like that and I'll have my little line that I see with my thread there so that has basted that fold now these little white threads I had done initially to just mark my lines I can remove it I don't really need that there anymore this is how this looks the lines on the outer edge have been folded and now the one that comes next, marked with a G, this one we fold it right sides together. So in this case, I can actually use this line that I have marked on the wrong side of the fabric as reference, right there. And instead of pressing it, I am going to baste it. And the same on this other side where it's marked G. The next one we have to do is the one marked with an M, which is this one. That's the one I had basted on before because this time we need the fabric wrong sides together. Find this little mark that I have here with thread. This is just my way around the marks. You might have different ways to mark and you might want to do it differently. And then the same on the other side. This is the other M, fabric wrong sides together. The last ones we're going to do are the ones next to the keyhole. These are marked as P right there and there and these are fabrics right sides together. So like this. And on these I'm going to baste as much as I can on the edge so that I don't hit the mark of the keyhole right there because they're very close to the edge right there. You can see that there and I'll do the same with this one. You can see that these lines here marked as J haven't been touched. It's part of the instructions. Those are going to be dealt with afterwards. But for now, we have all this ready. I have basted instead of pressed, but you might have pressed and you might have little creases there. And now if you're doing the keyhole, we would start doing this. I've got the right side facing up. And now I'm going to take my lining and put it right sides together. And on the lining, you're going to see the keyhole mark there. So I line this at the neckline, match these up on both sides. So I'm going to get a pin through that corner and poke it coming out on this other corner over here. Okay, there you can see my marks. It was a bit fiddly, poking the pin through one side, making sure it was coming out exactly on the other side so that the marks match everywhere. Now, I'm not gonna trust my pins. This is fiddly fabric, at least the lining fabric is. And I'm gonna do a basting stitch right on top of where I'm going to sew. 
I'm actually going to be sewing on top of my basting stitches and I'll just be careful to remove the basting stitches afterwards but I really want precision in this area so I'm just going to sew that by hand and get rid of these pins. Okay there you can see my hand sewing. I have actually hand basted this with the same color thread I'm sewing with. I don't want to get like a little fluff of another color there if I can't remove a certain fiber. I'm just going to start in any place maybe there and then just sew really carefully pivoting there carefully and I'm gonna do this with a short stitch length. As I go along this curve, I'll be doing it so slowly and I'll be hand cranking as well, making sure that it's nice and neat. Okay, I've taken the basting stitches off. Now what we need to do is now cut this excess away, leaving a very small seam allowance in there, about an eighth of an inch, because all this will be turned to the right side, so you don't want a lot of seam allowance in there. So about that much, and I'll just trim along here. I'm doing it with this because I feel I have a better access than with the big scissors. It's a little tiny area right here. Okay, so that middle bit is gone and you are going to have an opening and now we need to snip into those corners on the top, right there, and then on the other side. And then we also need to do lots of snips around this curve here. Okay, so that's all done, snips to the corners, snips on the curve. We're going to take all of this lining piece and put it through, but just be super careful, do it gently. So now this needs to be tidied up at the iron. <laughs> it looks like a hot mess right now, but it'll look super cute once it's all tidied up. Now, before we go to the iron, I'm going to do one more thing because when we go to the iron, we're going to press for real these pleats and tidy up that keyhole. And I have one line here that was marked as a J, which has nothing done to it yet. And I need this mark to be seen from the right side of the fabric when I'm actually assembling these pleats. So I know I'm going to lose this mark. So I'm just going to do a basting stitch here just to mark it for me. And I'm just using a green thread to make it different from the yellow ones I have on the other ones. Find the same line on this other side of the neckline. Okay, a little further from this J line, there is a line on the neckline here that is labeled as CFN and I'm going to make sure I mark it on the right side of the fabric but just on the top. It will be hidden within the seam allowance. So I'll just make a mark right there so that I, that I know it's right there and same as on this other side. Here is the keyhole and I've got my top wrong sides up so this is the lining right here. And I'm going to press with the tip of the iron just around there. I don't want to mess with everything that's underneath because I haven't done the pleats yet. So I'm just going to give it some heat, but super, super carefully there around that curve, making sure that the lining stays rolled towards the inside a little bit so that it's not going to be seen on the outside. That's why I really wanted to match the color at least. Now I'm going to flip it to the right side and it looks nice. Just ignore that the lining is behind. Remember I had just done that one to mark the line that's got a J on it. So this fold will be taken towards that J. So I'm just going to knit in these little folds I did before and just bring that over here that meets that line right there and now I'm just going to give it a light press. So that's one done. I'm going to do the same thing with the other edge. Take this fold that I have on the edge and bring it towards the green line right there, the J line. And I'm going to pin these in place so that they don't go anywhere. Okay, this next fold that we have here on the right side of the fabric is line M and we're supposed to bring this over, all of this, so that this little notch called CFN meets the center front right there. So that one will be right there and it'll cover the keyhole partially. This little notch right there is going to meet the center front of the blouse. And then you do the same with this one, they will cross each other like this. So. That notch should be on top of the one on the bottom right there. These aren't supposed to match like that in the middle. They are supposed to cross each other. So that's how it is. I'm being very gentle with this type of fabric because I have burnt this type of fabric in the past. 
Once I have it all stay stitched here, I can remove all these colorful threads and then this is done. <laughs> okay, I'm at the sewing machine and I've got lots of pins there holding all these pleats together. You can tell that this pleat is underneath this other one. This one is on top. It's supposed to be like that. That's what that notch is there for. That will be on top of the one underneath there. And you can see that this cross over is just in the center of this bottom of the peephole right there. So keeping it in a single layer, not touching the lining, I'm just going to baste all these together. I had already stay stitched this area there, so I'm just going to catch this central area to hold the pleats in place. And I'm going to do it smaller than a quarter of an inch seam allowance because this, the neckline uses a quarter of an inch seam allowance later to put these two together. Okay, now I'm just going to pull all these colorful threads out because they've already served their purpose which was just to mark those folds and those lines for the pleats. Okay, so this is the right side of the lining, this is the right side of the blouse. I've stay stitched the pleats and now I'm going to put these right sides together like this and sew as much as I can from the shoulder seams up to where these pleats sort of start. That's as much as I can sew without all this getting in the way from the keyhole. The keyhole is actually what gets in the way here. If you're doing the option with no keyhole, then this is very straightforward. You just sew all along the top right sides together. In this case, the keyhole is not gonna let you do that the whole way. So it's basically this section from the shoulder up to that first pleat that I'm gonna sew on this side. Okay, so this is what you have. I have pinned on the first side from the shoulder up to that first pleat right there. And on this other side, I've also pinned from the shoulder up to that first pleat right there. That's as much as you can sew because then you have all this keyhole business there. That is what we're going to sew now. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. This is the wrong side. This is the wrong side. We have right sides touching in there. Now the other side. Here I'm going to start from the pleat out. That's just the way it is on this side. Okay, so those two sides are sewn, not the center. And now let's turn this to the right side over here. So this will be the right side of the blouse. On this side you will have your lining. You will have an opening in the center. What we need to do now is do some hand sewing. Fold that in by a quarter of an inch. The front and the lining. And I'm going to do this super carefully. You can see you can meet them there all along this front edge. And then we're going to do some slip stitching right there. And it will close that up super invisibly and that's how the neckline is going to be finished on the front. My fabric frays and is hard to manipulate so I folded that in on one side on the lining and folded it in another and hand basted that down. This is going to make lip stitching this easier. I've slip stitched that center area nice and close. You can't see it. Now I can whip these out and that would be the end. I'm just going to do one extra step in here because I still have access. And on this curved area of the neckline, I'm going to do a few snips. And on this other side as well. We could do some under stitching from the shoulder up to a certain point right there. I'm not through the whole thing because you have this keyhole right there. I'm going to do that extra step now. Push the seam allowance to the lining area and sew right on the edge there. That's as much as I can get into this area. And now on this other side. Remember the seam allowance is underneath the lining, tucked in under there. So this is how this looks inside, under stitched, up to there. This central area that I did the slip stitch is not under stitched. And from here to there. But when I press this, I'll just make sure that the neckline is protruding a little bit from the lining so that on the right side all you see is the main fabric. Here I have the front piece, the lining piece is underneath. By this point you would have finished this raw edge of the lining. I have just surged it, I've pressed my darts down and then you will just need to align both layers and base them together on the side seams, on the armhole and up on the shoulder seams. So in essence this front piece with the lining, once they're all basted together you just treat it as one piece. 
put it aside and then we can finish the neckline of the back. This is the back neckline and I've stay stitched the neckline from one shoulder to the middle and from the other shoulder to the middle. This is the tiny binding piece that's cut on the bias and I don't want to go and burn my fingers on the iron by trying to fold this up by a quarter of an inch. So I have folded it here on the sewing table and I've just done a quick hand baste. So I can press this and then I'll have that fold ready. You don't need to press both sides. Once I've got this ready and pressed, I can put the right side of the binding to the right side of the back along the raw edges right there and sew them using a quarter of an inch seam allowance right there. Then we understitch, we flip it and we top stitch and that's how the back neckline is finished. finishing that binding just on the back you align the back and the front right sides together and sew through the layers the front is composed of two layers remember the lining has become one and it's been basted there before so now you just need to match and be really careful that at this inner section that it really matches right there so half an inch seam allowance sew and serge and then the seam gets pressed to the back and then tacked down so you don't really see the bulk there. So here when you're uniting the front to the back, this has to really align. You can see they're right next to each other. You don't want one a little further than the other. I'm going to surge, trim away part of that bulk and then press this to the back and then tack that little bit down by hand to keep it there and it's gonna look clean on the outside. And the same on the other side. And then you just need to align the side seams, sew the side seams, serge them and hem, setting your This is the first one and it looks dark red on screen. It looks dark red on the photos I took and the footage that I'll show you next. But I promise you, it's a burgundy. <laughs> I don't know what it is with this color. It never wants to appear on screen like it really is. And I promise you, it's not red although it looks very red right here. <laughs> and this is my rayon linen fabric. Up close, you can see the pleats. You can see these pleats on the side and that the pleats in the center, there's one that overlaps each other. So they're not meeting in the center. And from behind, we have a keyhole. Now it's hard to see unless I put something behind there to contrast like my skin <laughs> right there. You'll be able to see the keyhole when I have it on to show you how pretty it is, how different it is. It's so, so cute. I love it. <laughs> Then you have this short sleeve. You see one version I made later with a longer sleeve. Basically, once you're done with this area, then the rest is very easy to put together. After finishing the front and the back, that's when I sewed the, the shoulder seams. And you can see the seam allowance is going towards the back and that has been hand tacked there to keep it in place. Now you can use self fabric. You know, you can use the same fabric that you're making your garment out of. For me, this rayon linen is pretty precious. <laughs> I did have more but I would rather keep it for another garment if I can and not for a lining piece. And fortunately, I did have some lining fabric, some sort of satin lining that was exactly the same color. And that's what I used on the inside. You can see that the keyhole is finished very neatly in there. There's no raw areas, nothing like that. And on the side, you have bust darts according to your cup size. And then the, this partial lining doesn't reach the full bottom. You know, it is curved there and the edge has been surged really neatly. The other day when I got my brand new serger, these surged edges are the first ones I did with my brand new machine. The hem is curved and I just surged it and folded it up by about half an inch and top stitched it down. I think a curved hem can't take more than three eighths half an inch hem allowance. More than that really starts to pucker but the pattern has half an inch hem allowance, which is perfect. This is my first knit any top, my tester version in a rayon linen blend. I really love it, it's really flowy. I've got it with some fitted linen pants. It is a burgundy type color, but you might see a bit red on the screen. It's really hard to film this specific color. Super flowy, comfortable to wear. 
I can move around with these short sleeves. <laughs> I'll show you the details up close. Here you can see the bottom part. I actually shortened mine by an inch, just looking at the finished length measurements and for what I like, I use the shorten and length line and mine is one inch shorter from the original hem. It is curved, you can see at the front, at the back, nice and curved. I always like a curved hem like that. And you can see that there's enough ease at the waist and the hips to be comfortable. I like making tops like this with flowy fabrics when they have a little bit more ease like this. I'm sure I wouldn't want to make this in a stiff type of structured fabric <laughs> or else I'd want more shaping, I'd, I'd want less ease than this, but this is just perfect. Here is the neckline, it's so nice, it's not high, it's not low, it's perfect and there's a little peephole there, which I don't think shows too much. I, when I look down at myself, I don't think I'm showing too much, I'll be perfectly comfortable with this. The shoulder fit is good, short sleeves, good mobility up and down. I really like how these sleeves always fit me. I never feel constricted or that anything is tight across my upper back. And part of that has got to do with the cup size option because you choose your correct bust cup size. You have the great fit at the bust, all the space you need with the correct shoulder fit. In this case, there isn't a side bust out here. All that volume has been taken up to the pleats and it's really pretty. <laughs> Just a really nice top, has that extra detail here. I love it. Here's a closer look at the neckline. It's super pretty with these pleats the pleats here don't meet in the middle this one overlaps over the other one you can see it covering it there and then you have a little keyhole that's super cute the neckline up above is not high it's not low it's very comfortable i think it's perfectly fine like that i think the pleats are very pretty very different i love a style like this that has a different feature like this on the neckline so happy and you know i'm gonna make a lot more after making the first one it's always easy to go and make more because you already know how to sew it in the pattern you'll find the pattern piece for a sash that you can add to tie up around here if you want some waist definition I didn't do that. Um, the only times I wear sashes or belts are with dresses actually. I don't seem to wear those with tops. So if I lengthen this into a dress, I will consider that sash piece or just use it with a regular belt. But this one's the first one and I'm very happy with it. So nice. It's a really nice woven top with this detail that is super cute. <laughs> with that one I know I'm gonna wear it a lot I love the color the feel of it is so comfortable and that type of fabric drapes beautifully every single time I really love my rayon linen blend then I decided to make a chiffon version I wanted to really simplify this one it wasn't going to have lining it wasn't going to have the keyhole it was just gonna have the round neckline with the pleats and I decided that I was gonna finish the neckline with bias tape that I was gonna make myself and I was gonna make it sleeveless. So all the raw edges were gonna be finished with bias tape. I didn't have enough of the chiffon to make the bias tape or else I would have. So I just chose a really light cotton fabric for that and it helps to stabilize the neckline when the fabric is so light and it also makes it easier to sew. So this is what, how this one looks. It still has all the pleats. It has black contrasting binding on the armholes and the neckline. So nice. Now, this was such a delicate fabric. I didn't want to put my serger, you know, through it at all. So I didn't. And I did French seams everywhere. These patterns have half an inch seam allowance in general. So perfect to do a French seam. You can do the first step at a quarter of an inch and the second step at a quarter of an inch. Everything on the inside is so neat. That is the shoulder seams right there, the side seams. That's it really. You just had side seams and shoulder seams because there aren't any other seams. And for the hem, I didn't serge it. I folded it up by about an eighth of an inch and then I folded it up again by about a quarter or with hand basting and then I top stitched it. So pretty, I love this. <laughs> I have a separate exclusive video on Patreon about this specific version, how I mark the pleats, how I put the neckline together. It was a little bit different because of the fabric type and because I wasn't lining it. 
So if you are on Patreon and you can see my exclusive content, you can see about this one. And I love it. I'll just wear a cami underneath, put a skirt, and this is gonna be a favorite. This is the second Nittany top I made, and this is a little bit different because it's not lined, and the fabric is the most lightweight chiffon you ever see. So I have binding on the neckline, binding on the armholes. I made it sleeveless, which is not part of the pattern. Otherwise, it's the same, and it's a version with no keyhole here in the neckline, just the pleats on the front. Super flowy, love it. Nice and roomy, and it has to be for a style with this type of fabric. You wouldn't want to sew a tight fitting chiffon top. It has to have ease, and this is perfect. The length is the same as the other ones, the curved hem. I folded it up, hem is folded up twice, very narrow, hand basted and then sewn, super neat and I've got French seams all inside. It's a very neat top and I'm sure it's gonna last. <laughs> Rounded neckline, it's not too high, not too low. You can put your head in and out, no drama. And the original armhole was slightly out like this because there was a sleeve. I brought it in by about half an inch, but that's just because I want it sleeveless and I wanted it a little in, a little narrower. And from the bottom, I always raise it by an inch to get the coverage that I like for sleeveless because this wasn't sleeveless. <laughs> But otherwise, it's a great armhole I always like and the bias tape finishes really well. I wanted to show you the pleats up closer. It is a print, but you can still see them. These are the larger pleats that come from the outside. And then you have two smaller pleats, one overlaps each the other. And if you were doing the keyhole, the keyhole would be underneath in this area, although this one doesn't have one. So all the space for my C cup comes from above the bust. So there's no bust out right there. I love the top and I hadn't made something in chiffon in a little while. I was sort of itching to pick a nice one and make it. The amount of fabric I needed for this was so small. All I needed was to cut a back and a front on the fold and that's it. Because then the binding was with another fabric. So perfect. Love it so much. I would make 10 of these chiffon tops. So cute. Don't you think this is starting to the third one I decided to make a dress because I always do you know any top can be a dress you just need to lengthen <laughs> and I just put my top on measured from the hem to see above the knee how much extra I needed to add added about 14 inches keeping the curved hem added that to my pattern piece and cut it out I also wanted the sleeve to be longer to just hit above my elbow so I created a new sleeve piece for that and I did take the circumference around this area to see how much it was and left myself about two and a half inches of ease there to calculate how much to lengthen and how wide the bottom of the sleeve was going to be and how much hem allowance I wanted and how to drew the hem and for this one I used a rayon twill which is a little bit heavier than lighter weight rayons I'd say it's a light to medium weight fabric but it still drapes beautifully and that's why I was super happy to use it. And the print is so beautiful, it's so beautiful. Ta-da! I love it so much. This is a navy back. This navy is like those really dark navies. I had a lot of doubts whether it was black or navy, but it is actually navy. <laughs> and this one does have the keyhole. Um, you can't see it there because the pleats are covering it, but you can see it's right there with my skin on the back. So pretty, it has a slightly longer sleeve, although sewing the sleeve in is the same. And these sleeves never have too much ease, you know, they're very easy to set in. You're not struggling with a lot of ease and that you're trying to get here without packers, they are very easy to set in. And it's just long, long, and it's got a curved hem. I mean, it's not long, it'll reach above my knee. <laughs> And I've done different things on the inside for this one, although it still has the partial lining on the front. I was able to enclose all the seams in there. That's also included in the video that I have on Patreon. Because I wanted my pattern pieces to fit and I was using more because it was a dress, I do have an extra seam at the back. I just placed my pattern piece and left myself 3 8 seam allowance there so I could sew a seam. But it's really good because you can add a bit of shaping there on, this, on the back, on the small of your back. And I do that by just putting the dress on and just pinching where I want it to take it in a little bit and just 
took it in, took it out. I'll leave you a, a video where I've done this and shown this in detail as well, so you can see if that's something you want to do. But I, I always welcome a bit of shaping. So the back has that seam and there is a narrow binding there that I made myself. And the difference here, you can see that the shoulder seam is enclosed within the lining. See, the back, you don't have the seam like you had on the red one. And then the front has that partial lining that is enclosing the side seam there partially, only where the lining is. And then you have the regular seam coming from behind the lining. So it's so nice to have an enclosed seam because the sensation on your skin is so much smoother. So I always welcome the chance to do things like that. So if you're on Patreon, you can see how to do that as well. And it's so pretty. I love that I had enough fabric for this one here. I had just a little piece that was gonna work for this lining. So I'm very, very glad there's a little keyhole. And this is a dress I know I would want to wear with a belt for sure. It is nice and roomy and flowy and pretty and I love the fabric. <laughs> so let's see how this one looks. This is my knit and knee top but lengthened into a dress. So I added 14 inches considering that if I want to wear it with a belt it'll get shorter because you want to have a bit of blousing going on. So this is the length that I like with the belt on. If I take the belt off it'll be a bit longer but I think I'll always want to wear this with a belt because it is quite loose at the waist. I think I like the belt. <laughs> so I kept the curved hem. This is a rayon twill. Super nice fabric. It drapes beautifully. The sleeves have been lengthened to elbow length. This is my winter dress. It's always so easy to make a top a dress. I love doing it with this. Here you can see that I've got a little bit of blousing and a bit of blousing on the back as well. Of course, I'm in love with this neckline and why would I not want to make a dress as well? Because I love it so much. It's so pretty. Pleated neckline, so nice and little keyhole right there i think the print disguises the keyhole more than my solid version does i think you can see it more with the other one but it's the same <laughs> little bit of skin right there i love it and my sleeve fits amazing it's the same i measured the length i wanted it is sort of like a slim fit sleeve which is what i wanted but you can see i still have some ease there so the original one would have been around there. This is about five and a half inches longer. Really like it like that. Such a colorful dress. I know I made it for winter, but this is good for my winter. Believe it or not, the fabric is a little heavier. So I'm sure I'm not gonna wear it in the dead of summer, but it will be great for spring and autumn. And for the weather right now, it's awesome. <laughs> Love the colorful print. Yeah, just make yourself a neat and neat dress as well. You won't regret it. Lovely. made a garment that has like a little keyhole there I love it I hadn't made one before I'd never seen a pattern with it although I've seen something similar in ready to wear here and there I'd never had the chance to actually sew something like this and I found it super fun enjoyable as always to do something that's different something that's not what you're doing every day or the same type of garment that you're sewing frequently and that's how I felt sewing these just excited to get those pleats right to get the keyhole so yeah super enjoyable if you want to have some fun with a woven top for the summer I really recommend this one well all of each stitch patterns are always so so good and this is not the exception so if you like the style it's 20% off I'll leave you my affiliate link down below I'll also leave down below a blog post in the blog post I have this video embedded as well as other things and you can see the photos in more detail because I don't put them all in here as well so if you just want to see a little bit more you're always welcome to go to my website and it's linked down below and that is all I had to share with you today I have been sewing up a storm and I hope to see you very soon with another sewing video on the channel bye and happy sewing <laughs>